Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Again, welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and uh, joining me today on this, uh, on this particular topic that I'm, I'm, I'm planning on introducing here very shortly is, uh, as you know, you've seen Bob, Bob Williams. How you doing, Bruce? And I'm sure you've seen James Weather. He's the, he's the professor, has always been, mm -hmm. and the business side of the, of the program aspect of it. But anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit about leadership today. And uh, in doing so, we're going to probably use the, the issue in regards to uh, the sexual comments uh, to a county commissioner just, that was recently brought to, brought to, to the table, uh, to this area here in the Portland area. And the uh, way I'm going to share it with you on the front end of this, I, I know that there are all sorts of articles about this issue, but I thought the Willamette Week did a pretty interesting short piece on this deal. I think Steve Dean was the one in the Oregonian that first broke the story to the public in the Oregonian. But this is the Willamette Week called July 3rd, uh, 2013. And uh, anyway, the, the headline basically said, City Hall passed, why Hales refused to fire an aide who made sexual comments to a county commissioner. Then I'm just use just some certain comments, uh, just certain segments of this thing. They said that in his first interview about the controversy, Hales tells Willamette Week he refused Arthur E's offer to resign and decided against firing him for one basic reason. Hales wants to force fundamental cultural changes within the police bureau. And Arthur E, his police liaison, liaison is too valuable to lose. He said, who do you want? The mayor says, who do you want by my side when we rise to that challenge of recruiting the officers who are going to be here for 25 years? Hills, the mayor says, I want Baruti Arthuri right next to me. Who better? Okay. Gentlemen, you've all basically looked at this situation. You, you've checked it out. you kind of talked to a number of folks about this issue. And I might mention to the viewing audience also, too, Again, these are opinions, you know. I mean, we all have opinions, and and uh, and, I, and I've known both of these guys for quite some time, and and uh, and I thought it would be a it would be a good discussion, if you will, to talk to this this piece, because everybody's talking about it. But at the end of the day, where do we go from here? That's the bottom line. Where do we go from here? The benefits to the community, from an economic standpoint, I put that at the top of the list aspect of it. The whole issue of police, Portland police, has always been a major issue in all discussions uh, here in the in the city of Portland. And uh, as you note, the uh, the uh, ministerial uh, let's see, ministerial ministerial, ministerial, alliance. ministerial alliance here in the city of Portland uh, has very much been involved in this project. Uh, I know that uh, uh, who am I thinking about? Their, their, their consultant, uh, and the, the, the young lady, she ran for office. Uh, call uh, call up. No, not coming on. Oh. Okay. But anyway, it'll yeah, come up. I mean, okay. get I will think dollar. about it. Fun okay, part of good, getting good, older. Good, good. It sounds great. I hear that. But anyway, but but these are some, some major issues. And um, uh, as you know, uh, I'm sure all of you know that uh, uh, Mayor, Mayor Hill ran in the last election. And then in the bottom line, he is now the mayor of the city of Portland. And there are many issues on the table. We can talk about many of these. But we want to discuss this issue because this is something that I think a lot of the viewing audience would like to know. I mean, because you've got the community, and then the fact that it appears in the Oregonian, that was statewide. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks are trying, still trying to figure out what is going on in the city of Portland as it relates to, quote, its black community. And we all, and I think we still all agree, mm -hmm. that there's, there's no such thing as a black community. There's a community where a number of the residents have to live within an area. And right now, as you know, it, it, that's, it, it's being gentrified in many ways. Many of those folks up there in the Gresham area, in Clackamas, mm -hmm. or whatever up there. But Bob, Bob will tell you about that part of it. But anyway, so why don't we discuss this issue? Why don't we start out, Bob? I understand that you, both you and James uh, uh, sort of give us a little, uh, a little, little history in terms of, of, of your going out and, and, and talking to people about this particular issue, and then at the end of the day, kind of come up with it. Let's talk about that first. Mm -hmm. And James, I'd like for you to do basically the same thing. And then we'll throw it on the table and figure out this, where, where we go from here. Okay, Bob? Well, over the past few weeks, um, I've talked to a number of people, both from, uh, as, from as far away as uh, Battleground North to uh, Eugene on the south end. Uh, 
I've even talked to people when I thought I was going to be away playing golf in Reno and received number, uh, numerous calls and emails on the subject. Uh, and this was before uh, the, uh, the mayor made his decision. Uh, and what surprised me was that a, a number of the people that I talked to was there. Was there at this particular at the function? Particular and function. the function we we're talking about was at uh, that was up in I guess in it, it was Southwest Portland. Uh, yes, and it was the idea was to introduce uh, the uh, James can help me with the what the what the title is for diamonds the diamonds and denim gala or something that uh, I guess uh, uh, Bernie Foster Bernie the, Foster put of the, on of the it, scanner basically was the part idea was to introduce the city's uh, civil rights. Uh, whatever his job is in the mm -hmm. civil rights office mm -hmm. uh, to the community because a lot of people didn't know some didn't know he existed and some didn't uh, didn't know what his job function is. It was the office of equity, yeah, right? Equity. Office, some of office still of don't know. And, <laughs> you know, and so uh, that's another show at another time on mm -hmm. what what is his job function, what does he do? Um, but it just surprised me that so many of the people, both male and female, uh, had an uh, uh, opinion far to the left and far to the right. I mean, it's a wide gap as to uh, people that say, well, some said, well, it was nothing. It was, it, everybody was joking. He was on the mic and he was joking and he made a statement about how well she looked as, she, as he introduced her. And others said he was out of line, you know, she should not have been introduced. In well, let's that talk manner. about that statement that we talked about, and, it, and when I, we, it makes the point about the statement that was made by uh, Baruthi. Mm -hmm. It says, "Here's our beautiful commissioner, Loretta Smith." Arthur E. said, mm, "Mm, mm, She looks good tonight." Right. That was the statement. That's in question. And I, and from and from everybody talking about it and everything, it went from he made that statement to he made body movements to he made. You know, uh, I mean, it's just out there. It's kind of like passing a, a statement among 20 people. And by the time you get to the end, you got something totally different than what you started with. Okay. And so that's what that's where we are today. Okay. And, I, you know, it's, and then the mayor had to make his decision. Anything and specific about the, maybe talking to, were you able to, if, if you can, mm -hmm. share this, were you able to talk to um, uh, Commissioner Smith and our, if, if you will, uh, uh, Arthur e. uh, I I talked to both okay because we have been friends for years and I know both of them and they're both re uh, respected and with, with their well respected within the community mm -hmm. they're both uh, workers you know for the community and they're they, they they put the things within this community first well give, give us a short comment in terms of what, what, what how did they respond if you were if you were to put this in the nutshell mm -hmm. how did they respond so, so what? uh well i would say that uh commissioner smith, for commissioner smith uh felt that what was said she didn't want that to give uh everyone else that introduced her or talked to her the opportunity to feel that they had this they had that same right, right to, do the to same say thing. those things okay and uh, when I talked to uh, uh, Baruti, he felt that, hey, if I said something wrong, I apologize. I called her. I called her, and she didn't. I didn't get her. I left her a message. I apologize for it because it, that was not the intent. When did he know that he he had made that kind of a statement that was probably of, of concern well, to commissioners? Something during during the time in the, in the, in the, in the meeting. Uh, one of the young ladies that was there made the statement, "Don't go there." Don't go there to to Baruti when he was okay. when he was in her. Okay. You know, don't go there after he had said what he said. Don't go there. She and was so in the diocese. She, she was, was the diocese. no. She was uh, in the back of the room. Matter of fact, talking to Commissioner Smith. Okay. And she so made she yelled that out. She yelled that out in front and, of everybody. In front of everybody, some people laughed. Some people looked around, and he. I guess backed up on you know what he was saying. Did he say anything while he was still at the podium about that? About I don't. Uh, that no one ever said to okay. me, and okay. I didn't ask. I didn't okay. ask either one of them okay. if he okay. said anything. Okay. Well, why don't we why don't we get James in here involved in this? Then we get into this. James. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> I would say I know both of them. I've only, I've known Loretta longer. Uh, we were college classmates. Uh, I'm not going to go uh, 
uh, live here with everything we discussed. I felt, uh, I believe right. that she feels that uh, uh, that the uh, punishment uh, could have been uh, perhaps more decisive and the entire process uh, was not handled very, very well at, at City Hall's level. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, personally, I can't, I cannot support dismissing them uh, based on, on, on the information I have. I also feel like the, a week's a week's worth of uh, of uh, uh, time off with no pay. I, I'm not uh, convinced that that sends the right message as well. So perhaps there's some something should have been a little bit more uh, decisive as far as that's concerned. But I think there's a bigger picture here because we have a um, an individual a brother that we've hired to be the chief diversity or equity officer, and uh, and I'm not. Uh, going to put uh, uh, all of this on Mayor Hale's plate because that was actually decided before he was elected. But these are the types of positions that uh, we see uh, our governments putting in uh, into their hierarchy, which really have no power uh, to decide anything, and they're, they're more of a, of a flank cover for future litigation or circumstances such as this. If if it's uh, Mayor Hale's intention to give this uh, position. Uh, power to set policy to enforce uh, uh, civil rights or equity uh, type of uh, issues, then I would be all in, f in favor of it. But I've never seen any of these governments around here uh, give anybody in that kind of position any real authority to change anything. And I think that's magnified in this in this circumstance. And then the, another issue is the fact that the, the behavior of our own community, our own African Americans, it seems like every time that there's an issue uh, that that kind of has us against them or us against us, there's a street team of so-called community leaders that feels it's uh, their job to go out and try to get one party to budge off of its position. And, and I, while I don't have any first-hand knowledge of this, I'm sure it was uh, Commissioner Smith that they they likely went and saw and asked her to change her perspective or lighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Those are bigger issues uh, to me uh, at the end of the day than what was said because what was said, I, I believe that uh, 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 I've known Baruti for some time. While I don't think he had any intent, I believe that I, he knows that what he said was clearly inappropriate. If, even if you took the hip gyration out of it, uh, we don't need to... Uh, 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 turn any public appearance or any uh, professional type of appearance into something that uh, that you would see on Tyler Perry's uh, videos. We need to keep everything professional, above level, and in this instance, it wasn't done that way. Well, you know, I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll make another comment here that was made by uh, by Baruti. He says, "How did Baruti uh, explain his uh, his comments? He told city investigators he called Smith beautiful." but did not specifically mention her clothes. And the reason for his public comments about her appearance, Baruti said, had to do with race. Mr. Arthur Reeve further explained, the report said, that he goes out of his way to acknowledge the beauty of African American women due to, due to their historical mistreatment. Publicly? Publicly? No, that's the statement that he made. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just following up on that pu publicly. So it's his job to go and stand on a soapbox and say black women are beautiful. Well, I don't think that's what he's saying. What he says is that when he has an opportunity to introduce a black woman, he talk, He says, our beautiful sister. Mm -hmm. You know, and, that's and not I our see, beautiful sister. And I see nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, uh, but... And I, I see. I, let me rephrase that. I see nothing wrong with that if that's the way we did it in 1960. Mm -hmm. But in 2013, you know, our beautiful sisters want to be Commissioner Smith or Commissioner or City Council person or whomever. They want that title instead of a beautiful sister. Uh, I'm not Am even, I wrong with I'm, that? I'm not even convinced we did it like that in the 1960s. We did. I just think, I just mm -hmm. think that's something that he's, he's uh, uh, considered himself a, uh, the person to say that. And uh, Loretta Smith is an elected official. She did not uh, send her resume and get her job. The, the voice of the people put her in her office. 
and she should be respected uh, as such and, in, and not lumped in with everybody else the way these comments seem to do. Well, you know, I, I'm not going to argue that point because, they're, like I said, both of them are my friends, and I've known Loretta since college also. And the thing, the, the thing that I understand what Baruti was trying to, was, is trying to say and we're we're taking his words and we're kind of using them to further whatever avenue we want to take on this subject. Yeah, I don't have and, any avenue to and further. I'm not talking about you. Okay. I'm just saying we. <laughs> and <laughs> you and I. Okay. And so but he was trying to explain that he likes he wants everyone you know, he tries to make women feel comfortable. Well, this is not a, this doesn't make women feel comfortable. And so now he knows to change. Well, and I really, think that's what this but, guy But that's a hard nut to crack. This, this brother is very, very well educated. He ran a company. He certainly knows yeah. that we don't, we're well past that. We're well past the, uh, my beautiful Nubian sister out in public in, in front of a, a group of professionals, white and black. We're far, far past that. Okay. I can agree with that. But what, but about, but, but what about folks who are not educated, supposedly, yeah. quote, not educated, went you to Harvard, street, that are street sitting street smarts. On, yeah, well, just, just say, look, they're out, out there on the corner or whatever, and they see Well, some of them was in that room. What, you see what I'm saying? And then because they, that was an open forum. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, what are they supposed to say? What are they supposed to mm -hmm. do? I mean, are they going to be harassing if they just say, look at another woman and say, because I'm not trying to all do what, what are we talking about? Women, looks, women dress what, what, for men. Was this a fashion men show. Dress for women. Was this a fashion show? Was that? It wasn't a fashion show, so no one should have been there talking about it's looks anyway. It's always a fashion show. No, it's not always a fashion <laughs> well, show. Here's the it's thing. a fashion show for some people, yeah. but for some people, they're there to take care of business or handle business. It has nothing to do with looks. But why, why do people? Why do people dress? What, what do hmm? they dress for? Who do they dress for? Well, they certainly but, don't dress to get those kind of comments. But here's the thing, mean. Bruce. I, I, you know, I have to agree with, with James on this one, and that is. He was talking about the way she looked, not the clothing she had on. Our beautiful, you know, black sister well, I'm is agree, in the I'm room. Agree. I'm agree and so that. that was what he was doing. Well, maybe now everyone know that when you are introducing someone, introduce them. You don't have to talk about how they look. Where they, uh, you know, or any of those things. Oh, here's Bob. Maybe, maybe now. Here's Bob. <laughs> here's Bob. Here's maybe James. now. No. Yeah. Oh, so brother James. So either you, like brother you, James. Oh, okay, no. I got you. I got you. So either we got to say, okay? hey, so what you're saying is we either got to say my beautiful brown Nubian sister or here's James. How come you can't say uh, this, uh, uh, our, here's one of our most uh, more prominent elected officials like to, to welcome Commissioner Loretta Smith from Multnomah County. Yeah, why, then, why, then, why can't you do that? James, kill it and move on. But yeah. James, we are all <laughs> creatures of our exposure. But I mean, everybody, everybody's not a, a, a master's, have a master's or a PhD or whatever. I mean, you, you, know, you did that backwards, you, by oh, the way. Okay. Now, I don't have no PhD. <laughs> oh, he got a PhD. He got a PhD. Whatever. But, but <laughs> see, I, I guess my point is that we address one another as brothers and sisters and this amongst that, ourselves among ourselves yes even, amongst even ourselves. Like the, we like do that in public in all, in all due respect in all due respect the, the, the n-word we use quite a bit among ourselves i mean i, I brought up with, with billy jean you know that, that right. situation that just came up which is true it's a fact so we're going to use it when we uh, address uh when we introduce uh, uh commissioner smith or some other elected no. Okay, no, so no. there's a time and place for that, is what right. you're saying. But I'm talking about the And there's people. a time and place it, it for that. It upon the crowd. Well, but there's a time and place for that, and that was not the time and place for, to I'm going to make an excuse. I'm going to take the other side of this and make an excuse for, you uh, for Baruti oh, and okay. say that he got comfortable in his position and thought he was among friends, and he could make that statement because the majority of the crowd was African American. Okay. He found out that he was wrong. Okay. Now, and so what the penalty? The penalty I think suits the crime. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about the process that got to that point where where the mayor basically made his decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the person who was um, who was just appointed to the position, the office of equity, was there. He was the one that was being honored, right? Right. Okay. Now uh, now, when the mayor took office, he had all the bureaus, right? Mm -hmm. And so what he did, because it was it was Commissioner Amanda French was the one that basically uh, led the charge to actually get that office. So the Office okay. of Equity is no, a bureau? No, that's right. Mm -hmm. it's, it, hey, it's a bureau. So the bottom line is that they had discussions among the council 
Right. They, they had discussion right there. Too. Everybody had the opportunity to come and check it out. At the end of the day, the city council, i.e., voted, i.e., for the funding of that particular position. So that makes it's not it right. just a, It's not just a black. No, I'm just giving you the process. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is that the bottom line is that when that statement was made, and, I, and, and there were some other issues in Oregon that brought the piece up because they asked him on, initially about this issue when it first came out. He said, "Hey." Until the investigation is, is complete, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm sure that what he did, he just said, okay, fine. This is the man with the job. I'm responsible. Hey, this is what happened. You go out, check it out, and come back and give me a recommendation. But wait, wait. What did he say after after it first happened? What did he say? That? No, he assigned it to hey, No, Bureaucy. I'm talking about the, the, the head of that position, of that equity position. I he, don't know what he said. Hey, wait, he said it? It was, he was willing to put the whole thing behind him. Was Until that? the public outcry, well, then it was an investigation. It was not a plan no, no, to be no, an no, investigation no, 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 no. at the beginning. The mayor said, the mayor made the point about the fact that there will be an investigation. Mm -hmm. After then, public after, outcry, no, yes, there yeah, was okay. one. And then the idea is that he gave it to, to the man for the job. He paid right. X number of dollars. The man did his, did his investigation. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure he came back to the mayor and the mayor said, okay, what's up? He had a 50-50 split. That's right. And no, but he, I'm said, point and he, he says, well, we're going to have to do something. Right, right, right. You know, because uh, Baruta said, I here's what I said. And they said, well, you shouldn't have introduced her in that manner. Yeah, but you agree. And so now but, but you here's your penalty. But you agree. And let's this move person, on. This person is supposed to be the expert. He's being paid right. to do the job. Right. And uh, being the mayor, he, he said, okay, fine. Go do the job. Come back to me. Tell me what you found out, mm -hmm. and then give me a recommendation. So right. probably give me two or three, two, two or three options. So mm -hmm. now, what is his job? What is his job? Yeah, Same? he's still he's still uh, the office that, of equity. You, you just gave me his title. What is his job? What does he do? What and is, that's what hey, we need to find I, out. I, oh, now we have. No, so we, then oh, obviously, obviously, nobody is, knows his no, job. No, oh, no, okay, no. I got so you. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to assign you guys to go out and do some investigation and come back. No, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You preface this whole discussion about this job by saying the city council and a man of discussion had a discussion, voted on it, and nobody here can tell us what his job is. That's not my job. I'm just interviewing about this issue. It says I think we should have asked him to come on the show. Do you know what the director of the Water Bureau's job and is? And explain what his job is. What is the director of the Water Bureau's job? I don't know. To direct the Water Bureau. I, what is I, his job? No, 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 no. Not directly. I get a bill. Okay. And I pay my bill. He, he, we know we know what his we know maintain, something about what his job in, the the entails. Day. What does that job entail? When I said it was an office of equity. But what is what is his job? Well then I was his job is to, to make it, sure that the city is equitable in their hiring, their firing, and their disbursement of contracts. Well, that, that's, that's, that's what like I a would white say. paper statement. I'm gonna, that's I'm what that's a job that has no I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys, I'm gonna put it on the table. Just Google the job. Uh, you know what? what? I, I don't and need it, to Google it, the job to the know what it's there for. The job description will be right there for you. Hey, yeah. I don't need to Google the right? job to know yeah, what it's there for. It. That that job was, in, in all fairness to Mayor Hales, and I actually like a lot of what he had to say about another subject, about the prior mayor's hiring policies and his, his political position yeah, on that, stuff like that. Good. So I'm not going to put that all on him, but let's be real. That yeah. job is a job that really is to protect the city from... That's for right. race-related litigation yeah. has no power I'm to agreeing. set policy, I'm no agreeing. power to hire and fire people, mm -hmm. right. no power whatsoever. Yeah, but so why are we paying one hundred seventy thousand dollars so they can say we put somebody now, in charge of something? The other thing that I heard the mayor say, he said, "Look, I wasn't here when they selected the person. Right. Amen. But I'm willing to, to take that. the responsibility." To make uh, sure that the office is doing what it is doing his job. supposed to be doing. Otherwise, do job, I think he will get rid of it. Rid of well, they, right. But none That's of us in here know what his job is. What? Does, Does he, anybody know what his I job is? I told you, Google the job. Well, what, what? <laughs> if, if you're so into your, in the job, <laughs> no, Google the that, job. You know what? Does he know what his job is? Yes, he does. Okay. I can okay. guarantee you that the mayor knows his job. Oh, He's okay. got that responsibility. Mm -hmm. I, can, okay. I, can, I guarantee you that. Well, well, let's get back to let's get back to this situation. So, where do we go from here? What do, you, what do we say to the one, to the public at large? Right. Because i.e. there's an office of equity, and they went through a process, and then there's the other segment, and that is i.e. the African American community. I what do you say to the African American community in terms of where do we go from here? Because that's somewhat of a divide. Bob? Well, I say to them, this issue has been resolved. Now, you might not be happy with the outcome, but the mayor is, is, the, is, the, is the boss. And he decided what he would do to one of the people that worked for him, based on based, based on, on the recommendations, what, the recommendations of the, of the people of the other people around. That's him. right. That's taken care of. 
now where we what we as black people must do is not lose sight of the prize okay and what because is that? The, what, prize what is the prize is better education for our kids uh, safe neighborhoods good ho housing you know all those things that we've been fighting for all these years this is a deterrent takes us away from fighting for those issues the other one is what is your city council doing to improve and make life better for those of us within the city the city limits? okay now we're uh, a deterrent we, to before, a lot of that before we get to james on this piece let's not forget now as you say where do we go from here the fact that the mayor made it very clear that he's going to be totally dependent upon baruti Mm -hmm. in, the, in all the in, in the communication between the police department right and that was a major major issue It's always been a major profiling and this that and the other it was mm -hmm. a major in fact it just so happened Daryl Turner who happens to he's a policeman who's who's, who's president of the I union know, right etc and so consequently there's going to be uh, blah 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 at the end of the day uh, hopefully some of the issues that of major uh, were major concerns with the black community hopefully will be somewhat resolved fair uh, nope okay well Jane on that note What's, uh, what's, I, I, what's first the of direction? all, I don't understand the fixation with the police department. I know the police department has issue, but really what they're saying is we're the problem. We're always going to be the problem. You're always going to have contact with the police. But what do you say to the, uh, the Albany? Well, I just want to go back to what, huh? What, what, what do I say, say to them? Because they have been a leading force in, in regards to Here, the Here's what I would say. Here's what I would say to, to, to all of them. We need, we need to, to make our own decisions and have our own calls. If we develop our we, own economy, we, we, I'm talking about African Americans, there's a relationship between crime and poverty. And if we are independently creating our own wealth, which I am a strong proponent of, chances are we're not going to be getting in trouble. But no, no, we don't want that. We want you to always be dependent on it's us, serving. always call cause trouble, and instead of saying we're going to do something in in a way of helping you start your own businesses, help you pay your own taxes, we're going to make sure that the next time you're poor and you run into police, we have a mechanism in place. I'm waiting. Yeah, oh, I'm <laughs> waiting too. Well, I'm waiting too. I'm, I, I, can, I can comment on that. One of the things that I've found in, in, in most cases when we talk about developing our own wealth, when you have nothing, you can't. You can, you can see what everyone else has, but you don't know how to get there. And you don't have. If you don't have someone helping you to move forward and get there, and develop that plan, then you can. You will fail. In ninety-nine. That's why in five years most new businesses fail. Yeah, but why did why did ours never get off the ground? Because there's no one helping to get it off the That's ground. That's not what I hear. I hear they give a lot of money to incubators to help minority-owned businesses fail. Or excuse me, succeed. I can I can talk from personal <laughs> experience. Personal experience. Mm -hmm. As the police station on Killingsworth mm -hmm. was gonna be my grocery store. Okay? We worked the plan with PDC. I was going to open a grocery store where all those shops were. By the community the, college, by uh, PCC, uh, right? No, no, the one on uh, Martin Luther King and, and, and Killings. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Where Fred Myers used, used to, to be. be. Okay. I was going to open a grocery store there. Okay. They were going to give me $2.5 million to open a grocery store there. Sounds like a lot of money. And if you don't know the business, well, they're going to loan you two point. They were going to loan me two point yeah, five million. Okay, I I'll, re sure I'll rephrase remember that. that now. Yes. <laughs> so what happens? They come to me, I, they, they pay a guy $10,000 to work the plan. He gives them a great plan for me, uh, the, the, the dynamics of what the community was, what it would do, the whole bit. Boom. I had to, I had to deal. But when I looked at the paperwork and I started putting my numbers together, and it came to 2.75. And so, yes. So you went back to the table. So I went back to the table, and they told me, say, well, we think 2.5 will suffice and you can cut here and here and here you know and I said wait a minute I have a job a very good job that I'm about to quit I'm not looking to fail even with your two and a half million dollars well that supports my position because uh, when we bought that Chevron on Martin Luther King of Fremont we had nothing the city had nothing to do with it except suing us trying to stop it we didn't borrow anything from the city we didn't ask for any loan guarantees from the city we did it all on our own and what did the city do they sued us 
It's like you're going to be a nuisance there selling alcohol. Never mind that there's alcohol being sold under your company's name in five or six other places across the city and you're not a problem. When you come into your own community, we're going to stop that from happening. Why? We were shut down. Yeah. I mean, uh, and it was said, we didn't authorize it. You can't do it. Yeah. We well, you know, Bob, so, he, he, so that's, he, that's, he, that's what we fight every right. day. He makes a good point. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, he need to go back to the table because at the time, like Bob said, uh, you were at what? First Interstate? Uh, for, yes. And I was at U.S. Bank at the time. No, you were at uh, the other one. U.S. Bank. That was U.S. Oh, Bank. U.S. Bank. Okay. With, with John Loriaga. Yes, you were. Yeah. And the bottom line, what we were doing, I just so happened, I was working for Loriaga up in that arena. And the bottom line is that they, we used that power, Bob and whatever. And the whole idea was that many of the folks that were going into banking were just tellers and whatever. They mm -hmm. had no access to lawyers. So what we did, the idea was put together this organization and, and, and working with all these other banks, we'd have a meeting, and if you will, to introduce folks, black folks, to other areas in banking, whether it be real estate, whether it be all, all kinds of good stuff. It was a good deal. We were yeah. having good stuff. And there's a business reason for oh, that, right? Oh, very much so. It was, it was, even today, as there's, there's, there's a business reason. Oh, but where, so. where we've changed mm -hmm. is that um, and I can we'll speak right from myself we'll be right with you, uh, Carla. personally that uh, we and myself, we're not afraid of competition. Right, right. We're not I'm afraid saying, to yeah. go down right. and, and line it up, strap right. our, our helmet on and go yeah. one on one. But we have to have something of yeah. a, the exactly. same. Uh, exactly. We want the, uh, want the playing field yeah. to be level. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. if the playing field is <laughs> level, everybody step out of the way. Right. Yes, right. Right. Playing field level, that's a good point. Carla, you're on the air. Your question yes. or comment, please. Absolutely. This is uh, Chad Devin. How are you, gentlemen? Doing? Okay. First of all, I agree with uh, uh, most of what uh, the distinguished gentleman from uh, from uh, his uh, capital investment company. I think the problem is we have to also spend time and discuss the problem of our community. Because as a businessman, as a developer, as a general contractor, the problem was oftentimes uh, the so-called establishment it was people in the community who had this mentality that they chose the winners and the losers. I'm from the black folks. Yep. It, to me, it's ludicrous that you are spending time talking about a man who made a comment that someone looked good. Mm -hmm. this, it's, to me, it's beyond. It's the same thing with Faye Birch and, and, and Dick, Dick Bogle yeah, exactly. on, on, lit on the booty. Come on now. You know, all I'm saying to you is this is why we have a problem. And, and, and even though I hear you, Bob, you know that's the problem. These Negroes sit around here and play games about who's in and who's out. Or oh, he's angry, he's not angry. You know, he's a Republican, she's a Democrat. That's right. He's anti this, he's pro that. But I can tell you, I made some pretty good money in this city, but I didn't make it with black people. I had to use white people to front for me to do my deals. Bruce knows I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And so, so when we talk about these kind of issues, I, I totally agree with you, James. It's ludicrous. That in the 21st century, we go back to 20th century models. But as you know, gentlemen, I was president of the National Business League. And at one point, head of the minority contracts, me and Bruce did these things. Most of every, I'm the one that started the whole process with the House of uh, 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 for, for, the, for the minority uh, contracting business in this dang state. Chad. You know what I would, I would tell you? The truth of the matter is, yeah. it is yeah. our community that's, that's the right. problem. That's okay. the problem. Okay. Until we understand the difference between the social welfare side versus the capital side, mm -hmm. we will continue to suffer. And thank, thank you for the time, gentlemen. I appreciate this discussion. It's very hey, August. Chad, but before thank you hang up, I do want to give you one uh, compliment, and that is that you brought me to the table on the, Fred, on that, on the deal that I was talking about with uh, PDC. Absolutely, Bob. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks very, thanks well, very much, Chad. And, 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 a couple points. Yeah, think? and 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 I, I I like a lot what the brother had to say. And what one of the things that's that's highlighted, if we talk about and you and I have talked about the issue with minority contracting, and the the set aside mm -hmm. uh, preference, which I believe is is a failed strategy for us. And what I put on the table was capital to acquire a larger enterprise for some of these minority contractors. There's some uh, Ray Moore Construction, Jeff Ray Moore, Jesse Jackson, educated, sharp, star for opportunity, but realistically they're going to get the, a set aside maybe a little bit more when both of those brothers are qualified 
to run a much larger operation and then they wouldn't need to set aside as most businesses whether they have enough capital to run their business without these programs which I believe are going to be uh, put on the street anyway put out with the trash by the Supreme Court at some point in time in the future or would they rather have the capital to compete and win or lose on their own merits mm -hmm. that's the discussion that needs to be had and the set asides and and these minority programs that really just benefit mm -hmm. a handful of people for crumbs need to be out with the trash so as well. So you're thinking about sunset well, laws of some sort that should have had that impact? Well, it's going to happen. I mean, they're, they're fighting we, it. They're, they're and, fighting and it. And here's who's fighting it. The people that are getting the other 85 percent don't want those 15 percenters in that pool because it cuts down on what they get. So they are fighting it to keep that 15 percent alive and well. Am I wrong, James? I, well, and we're, we're helping. That's it. You know, and I don't do respect, and, and, and Ted knows we, where I'm coming from on this piece. Of, I remember when Namco came to town, National Association of Minority mm -hmm. Contractors, and all due respect, that was something that uh, Chad and I did because we knew the guy who was the president of Namco in Washington, D.C., who just happened to have been a Republican, and we were doing some things up there, and he basically gave us a certificate to come down this way. But the, but the definition that we had in regards to, the, to Namco was actually to get the AGC, which is the, basically the major prime contractor mm -hmm. in the state of Oregon, in fact, for the, for the country for that matter, to come on NAMCO's board. We were working, the ID come on board and vice versa, NAMCO would be on their board. See what I mean? Because it's a very select market in you. I mean, it's a very competitive kind of a market in there. And the idea is that, you know, all, in all due respect, all majority successful uh, contractors, if you will, uh, are, are not basically the same. You know, you, you got, hmm. it's a very small group of folks, and you've got to basically get in that organization, go to the training, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's just too much. On. I mean, it's, it's just on and that's on and on. That's just too, too much. Why can't, they just can't, why can't they just get their businesses and be a member of a, an ordinary well, trade association for that's everybody else and everybody compete that's, on their own that, Well, merit. that's exactly where we were going. Minority with this or not yeah, minority. Right. That's where it was. But anyway, I want to get that piece on. The well, other thing, you know, we, we, got about, we got about nine more minutes yeah. aspect. That we've been talking about the leadership aspect of this piece. One thing that came out of the Supreme Court, I mean, since I got you guys, I want to talk a little bit about that piece for a minute. The voting right act piece, you know, <laughs> the, the whole issue with the voting. I thought that was a very interesting piece. That, as you know, the Supreme Court came down and basically knocked off about some of the issues in regards to voting. Primarily, it was basically talked to the, to the southern part of the, the states, if you will. And... Um, and then they basically voted it down aspect of it. And the national, the big, big, big raw was, well, gee whiz, you know, we're not, we're not there anymore. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. It was targeted to black folks. But you know, all, all due respect, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna say it straight up. In, in all due respect, it really wasn't this no. time black folks. In all due respect, it was about Hispanics. Mm -hmm. That's really what the deal was, because they've been making a big noise of late, if you will, that they've got the big vote, voting block aspect of it. And this is just business. It's just a strategic well, position to say, okay, I'm throwing it on the table, I, giving I, you something to talk I, to. I wouldn't, what, I, what I wouldn't give the Supreme Court that much of a pass, because uh, if you look at a state like Mississippi, which is 40 percent uh, people of color, they've never elected uh, uh, since several years a, a Democratic uh, they've never uh, elected a Democratic president out of that region. And given our numbers down there, given people of color numbers, where probably in about 10 years they'll be 50 50, it's not, even that's not going to cure that problem. But every because, state, every state varies. Yeah, but the, way, but the way they have those, the, the way they have their domicile set up, uh, they, it doesn't matter that we'll be more than 50%, they'll still always win. And, and if that act doesn't address problems like that, I think then, then we need to just put it away. But so that's who are we talking about? Now, when they made that decision, was that just, just to impact black folks? Is that what, is that what no. you're saying? It, that's not the case. Well, but it, 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 it Welcome does. Welcome to the it, newbies. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it does impact us. It does impact us. Well, and but, and but, now it really impacts us because we really changed the, the whole complexion of the last election. And now there's a, some mindset that's saying they, they might come out in those numbers again. Well, now, I mean, let's be very clear now. President Obama, this is the last term, but it, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, there won't be, a, as I see it, I don't see another African-American running for president in the very, very near I don't future. think they're concerned about that. I think they're concerned about our uh, propensity to vote. As yeah, but, and, but and yeah, the numbers who brought that, that to the table. Or you, so you're saying that well, we only voted for him. We only voted in these numbers. A lot of folks black? did. Trust me, a lot of folks did. Well, I, think, I thought we Bob, had more value than You've been in this business for a long time. Talk good. to me. 
Uh, I think out there. I think uh, a lot of people voted for him because the other si your side of the aisle, oh, my side, <laughs> the Republican side candidate shot himself in the foot yeah. because. With three weeks to go, you talking about the last election the, or the first? Election? This first, this last, the election. last election, because forty-seven percent. When, when, when um, uh, at one point, Mitt was winning this election. Am I wrong? Wrong. I think he was just statistically well. Let's tied. say statistically tied then. But you know, and so, but he did some things that shot himself in the foot and sent people the other way. And that's that would that caused us to win this by the by the margin that we did. Now, here's the thing that people don't understand. When politics is being done, it's not done on the for today. It's done for your future. Okay? And as they say, there's a five year plan. There's a lot of illegal aliens in this country. Uh people here illegally. Because the alien comes from outer space, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, uh, but there's a lot of people here illegally. Okay. There's a lot of people that are here that are legal that are not voting. Mm -hmm. And as they begin to get into this voting uh, block, they're going to listen to someone at some point. And what the, uh, what the Latino community is doing is trying to... They understand the political arena that we live Be in. Be quick now, because we got to Okay, on. that we live in, and they are trying to get a block. And they realize that if they can show that they have a large enough block, they can, they can Citizenship. get what they want. Citizenship. That's it. And so that's what Regardless this is all about. Regardless of Republican about. or Democrat. That's what that is all right? about. Right. Well, you okay. started off pretty good. I thought that the, the candidate was a well, weak candidate. Yeah, well, but, uh, but no, I thought I think he could have been a very strong candidate. In How? fact, in fact, the Republican Party could have elected the first African American president, Who? and that was General Powell. Yes, absolutely. And I oh, think yeah. I think absolutely. blacks would have voted for him. They're absolutely. afraid. Would they have voted for him? Sure. Yes, they would. That's right, right. Absolutely. And I think that in, had Mitt Romney selected Governor, I mean General Powell, to be the vice president. Why would he do that? No, I'm That's saying like that, that would have been like the come off the bench. Politics, that would have been like the caucus bringing bringing Jesse Jackson as his vice president back no, then. No, that's not even and a good that's like, saying, that's like pulling Mike, put, saying, Michael Jordan going to put you on the team, but we're going to make you the sixth man. You're the one that's going to win this thing. Why does he have to be the vice president when he could be the president? No. I talking, wouldn't take the job if I was Colin Powell when I know I could beat him. James, we're talking politics. Well, that's right. well and that's why he didn't run. Wait your turn. That's exactly that's, why he didn't run. See, let's call it wait that's your exactly turn. exactly why uh, he didn't on, run. The point I'm making is politics, politics is politics. That's okay? it. But we would have had the first, Republicans would have had the first African American elected president of the United States. Too close to the too close to the right, button, my man. And the other entity was the fact that it helped him out quite a bit was, and we got to make sure we put him on the table. Is a guy by the name of Al Sharpton. Oh yeah. Point blank. Okay, guys, look like we we're at the end of the show. We got about another minute or so. This has been great, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with another episode, another chapter, if you will, with these two guys talk about some other issues. Thanks very much for being with us. Have a good day. Take care.